up guys, Christian Nett here for Card Player TV and I'm with Justin Bonomo. Day two of the $40,000 buy-in No Limit Tournament has just come to an end and you are chip leader of the 23 players left. First of all, how does it, how's it feel to start with this series with a cash and a huge event? Uh, really good actually. All three years, my I've had one big result each year and all three of the times it's been like right at the start, event four and event ten, so I guess I'm following the pattern right now. Now, you're coming off of a win of the World Series of Poker Circuit event at Caesars. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Do you think that coming off of a win helps to, to play better? You know how some people go back to back. Does that, do you think that, that is, uh, there's some kind of an effect there with confidence? Uh, a little bit. I try not to get like, you know, two results oriented. It's one tournament. It doesn't mean that much. But I really do think the past six months I've been like really focused. I haven't played that many tournaments, but I've cashed in like five or six or something. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've just been playing my A game, and I'm just playing as best as I can. All right, let's talk about this event. How did your day one go? Started with 120,000 in chips. Uh, great players in the field, 201 players that started, um, all big names. How did it go for you from day one? Uh, day one was great. I had a perfect table, you know, a bunch of amateurs at it, and I got, you know, kind of lucky. Like, I flopped a set against a guy's aces, and it was a spot where a good player could get away from it, but I ended up getting his whole stack. You know, I was at 300k at the first break. It was pretty much just smooth sailing the whole day. I never really lost any pots, just chipped up, chipped up, and ended up something like second, third in chips at the end of the day. Okay, now today you came in as one of the chip leaders, and you kind of kept that going and kind of soared up at the end of the day. Did you win any big pots, or was it just grinding? What, what was um, that You know, obviously there were a couple of big pots, but for the most part it was just more the same as day one. You know, again, I got really lucky that you know, I never really lost any big hands. None of my big hands got cracked. Didn't really have any tough decisions. I just, you know, slowly chipped up, you know, mostly medium-sized pots. Okay. Nearing the bubble, uh, I was reading the live updates that a lot of the hands were three-betting pre-flop, not seeing a lot of flops. Do you think your background as an online player has helped you um, at this stage of the tournament? Um, not really. I'm actually the op. I'm, like, a lot more passive than most online players. I think that's like one of the mistakes online players make when okay. they play live tournaments. They're so used to short stack tournaments online that they're, you know, where it's correct to play that aggressively. But so they don't, they're not as good at seeing flops live and they don't mm -hmm. play that well after the flop. So I actually, I don't really three bet as much as people think. So do you, do you think you have the image where maybe you're, you look more aggressive than you really are? Because I've heard from a lot of people like, Justin Bonomo is super aggressive, but you think you're a little more passive than most players, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, I'm capable of making big bluffs, and because of that, they think I'm aggressive on mm -hmm. every single street. People tend to remen remember the big bluffs rather than... The yeah, well, it's, it's that too, but they also, they see these big bluffs, and they think that means how I play in small pots, that means, you know, that I'm going to 3-bet more than call, but, you know, I really, you know, I'm position's really important, especially when you're this deep stacked, so, mm -hmm. you know, those things are more important to me than just, you know, always being the aggressive player. Okay. Did you get your seat trough for tomorrow? Mm-hmm. And what's it looking like? Uh, it's good. I got uh, a couple of people with big stacks on my table, but uh, like Greg Raymer, he's one of the more uh, loose ones, and he's to my right, which gives me a good position. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of the better players are at other tables, so I'm pretty happy with my table draw. When you have a big stack, um, and when you, you have a big stack, and he's aggressive to your right, how do you take advantage of that with knowing that Okay, he's a big stack, and if you three bet him, he knows that you might be doing that light because you're playing stacks and because you're playing in position. So how do you kind of balance that with taking advantage of a player to your right? Um, okay, well, I don't want to discuss how I'm going to play against Greg. Because, okay, yeah. But I'll, True. I'll, I'll True. tell you my general rules. Um, three betting light works really well uh, if you're really deep stacked because then th they can't really do much about it. If you're only like 50 big blinds deep, they can move all in. Mm -hmm. But if you know if you're over 100, then it starts to work really well. Um, but one thing that can get in the way is short stacks after you, so you got to be aware of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but pretty much universally, if you just call with like you know your top 20% of hands, meaning both aces and jack 10 suited and everything in between, then there's really nothing they can do about it. It makes it really hard for them to play after the flop because your range is so strong. But at the same time, it's still a lot of hands that you get to call with. Well, it's so good to pick your brain. I don't want to give, I don't want you to give away too, mi too much information. So thank you so much. We're going to let you get some sleep and good luck tomorrow. Cool. Thanks a lot. Christian Nett with Justin Bonnell for Friday TV.